Hello, it's a pleasure to be presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ to you today or tonight or whenever you're watching this. I uh, just want to thank you for um, all the comments and emails, and I, I do appreciate the encouragement. Uh, today, I, I'm still, the Lord still has me in a place of a burden for what is coming, specifically in regards to the deception that is sweeping the nation and the nations. And the Lord wants the warning to go out. That is the job of the watchman the, to warn the people of what is coming, what is sweeping upon, sweeping over the nation, and that is the deception of Satan it has begun and it is only going to increase and it is only going to multiply. So obviously we focus on Jesus and we walk with Jesus and in doing that, I'm being obedient in exposing what the enemy is doing and exposing the tactics of the enemy because in journeying and walking with Jesus, he does not want his people led astray. He does not want his sheep swept away in the delusion. So we're going to be looking at a few different things in regards to the satanic power that is being released and how this operates and how this deceives and how this uh, masquerades as the power of God, which deludes people, which brings a delusion in people's hearts. Okay, so there is this line of thinking in the church and is this mainstream teaching in the charismatic church is that uh, Satan has no power. He doesn't have power anymore. All he can do is deceive people. Well, I'm sorry to say that that is absolutely false. That is unscriptural. It is dangerous, and it is a doctrine of demons that has infiltrated the church, being propagated by teachers in the charismatic community to set people up for a fall. To it, 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 this is plant, this is misinformation that is planted by the enemy, so that the church will be deceived. Um, we're going to take a look at the scripture to determine. Um, that this is absolutely false. Both we're going to look at both Old Testament and New Testament. Um, so first scripture is Second Kings uh, chapter three. Now we're going to look uh, at verses thirteen and nineteen first. Um, so Elijah is given a prophetic word to um, to Israel about them going to war against Moab, and Elijah. <clears throat> says this, I'm scrolling down here, he says, thus saith the Lord, make trenches, and then I'm, I'm skipping a few, and he says, okay, um, you will not see wind or rain, yet the valley will be filled with water, and you and your cattle and your animals may drink. This is but a simple thing in the sight of the Lord. He will also hand you over to the Moab, hand over the Moabites to you, and you shall strike every fortified city, in every choice city, and that means principal, every principal city, and cut down every good tree and stop up all sources of water and ruin every good piece of land with their stones. Okay, so Eli Eli Elisha gives them the, the prophetic word of the Lord that you are going to, the Lord's going to hand you over, uh, the, the Lord is going to hand Moab over to you, rather, and you are going to take every fortified city, every principal city, you're going to crush them. Anything that, that you, as you attack, you're going to take everything out. Well, when you scroll down uh, or you look at the very last few verses of the chapter, 2 Kings 3, verses 26 through 27, it says this. When the king of Moab saw that the battle was too fierce for him, he took with him 700 swordsmen to break through to the king of Edom. But they could not. And the king of Moab took his oldest son that was to reign in his place and offered him publicly as a burnt offering to Chemosh on the city wall. And, and there was great wrath against Israel. And Israel's allies, Judah and Edom, withdrew from King uh, Jerome and returned to, the, returned to their own land. So the point is this, Moab is operating in under satanic power, under satanic rule. 
they they worship and serve. I was reading from the Amplified here, but the Amplified is simply saying that they serve a god named Chemosh. So we're talking about witchcraft in operation. We're talking about sorcery in operation. We're talking about a power of false gods in operation. And, you know, the greater in witchcraft, the greater the sacrifice, the greater the offering, the, the greater uh, of the release of satanic power. So what you see here is the king of Moab offering what is most precious to him, which is his firstborn son that is going to reign in his stead. This is something that the king did not want to do. But when he saw that the city was going to be taken, that they could not beat them, he offers his firstborn son to a false god and it releases an onslaught of satanic power and great wrath came against uh, Israel. Now, we don't know the extent of what the great wrath was, but it was in the spirit realm, the satanic power being released, empowering the army, uh, empowering Moab, who was being defeated, who was being pushed back, crushed, that they could not in the natural overtake them, as we see in the verse before. They could not break through to the king of Edom. They could not win the battle. But as this, as this offering, this blood offering was released to Satan, the power was released. The satanic power was the released to then defeat and push back the forces of good. In this case, Israel, Judah, <clears throat> and Edom. And <clears throat> it says that wrath was released against them. It pushed them back. It defeated them. It, it actually prevented them from fulfilling the prophetic word of the Lord given through Elisha, the sin they would, saying they would t overtake every city. So think about that. I'm not, I'm not implying in any way that the power of Satan is greater than the power of God. What I, am, what I am saying here is that the will of the Lord was for them to overtake the city. The prophetic word of the Lord was for them to triumph and win. But because of this blood offering, the satanic ritual offering of the occult, the witchcraft power that was released, it actually prevented the word of the Lord from occurring. It prevented the battle from being won. <clears throat> now, I firmly believe that if we, as, as true followers, disciples, and believers, that when we're walking in the spiritual disciplines of the Lord, that when we're walking with the Holy Spirit in prayer, you know, and, and in a lifestyle of, of discipleship and oneness, being in intimacy with the Lord and fellowship with Him, that we are going to uh, push back and destroy the forces of Satan. Okay, I, I fully believe that. I fully acknowledge that. But what I'm saying here is, is that much of the church in America and in the nations, is not fully committed walking with the Lord, all right? So when we're in that place of, of not in total obedience, and not walking in total surrender, not in complete and utter dependency and fellowship with the Lord, then we can very easily be pushed back from the purpose and plan and will of the Lord by satanic forces as they're released. Because as we can see, when, when Satan's power is released, it does push back uh, the plans and purposes of God and prevent the prophetic word of the Lord from occurring. There's much to be learned through this scripture that the Holy Spirit is teaching us. <clears throat> now, in the time of uh, uh, Manasseh, in 2 Chronicles 33, 1 through 6, we see that um, as Manasseh turned to operate, it, it actually lays out that he, it says that he practiced, he put his sons through the fire. So he offered, he, he allowed uh, offerings of the fire, uh, sacrifices to demons, children to demons, which is what's going on in America with abortion. See, we don't, we don't really look at it that way. In term, but no, these are these are children being sacrificed to demons, which is empowering satanic powers in the country, which is actually hindering and 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 destroying the will of God. Again, this is Second Chronicles thirty three, verses one through six, and it says he made his sons to pass through fire, 
and he practiced witchcraft, divination, practiced sorcery. He dealt with mediums and spiritists, and he did much evil in the sight of God, provoking him to anger. So as we can see, all of this, this sorcery, this witchcraft, it's all tied in together. This sacrificing of children, abortion, it's all tied in together. It's, it's actually releasing satanic power in the nation that is coming against the will of God, that is coming against the church, that is preventing the church from taking the promised land, preventing the church from gaining victories, even the God, even God prophecies in this nation. <clears throat> You know, we're, it, it, we've got to be aware of what the enemy is doing. We have to be aware of the satanic power, the, the rituals that are going on. You know, and we're, we're seeing more and more of ministers operating in the occult, operating by the power of witchcraft, and by the power of sorcery. And we're going to go into that and, and expose a little bit of that. <clears throat> but, you know, you see Manasseh, who was ruling the nation and he was operating this high level of witchcraft, high level of occult. And, you know, I've heard ministers, oh, well, it doesn't mat say things like, it doesn't matter who, you know, who is governing the nation, who's president of the nation. We serve Jesus. And they make statements like that. We're, you know, it, nothing could be further from the truth. I understand we serve Jesus. But obviously it matters because you see Manasseh who's in charge of the nation and he's, and he's shifting the nation to witchcraft. So the whole nation is in idolatry. The whole nation is in the, the sacrificing of children. The whole nation is moving in, in, in this sorcery and devil worship. And it's empowering satanic power to just take more and more of the nation, have more and more influence over the nation. And you see that in the United States even now and other nations and so this, this statement of it doesn't matter who is ruling the nation or who is in charge of the nation is, is I'm sorry, but it's, it's, it's a demonic statement. <laughs> it is, it is, it's a statement of delusion. It's not true. It does matter who is overseeing the nation, who is in charge. Just like saying it, it doesn't matter who's overseeing the church, overseeing a certain church, church in a region or a, a small congregation in a city. Well, it doesn't really matter who's overseeing the congregation. We serve Jesus, right? We serve. No, it absolutely matters because there could be a minister of wickedness overseeing the church who, who outwardly you know, is professing Jesus, who's proclaiming Jesus, but inwardly is living a life of sin and wickedness. So it absolutely does matter. That's what the Bible calls a wolf in sheep's clothing. You know, we must not be ignorant of the enemy's schemes and his plans to destroy the people of God and to destroy the nations. <clears throat> there was a man called Simon who moved in the power of, the people said the power of God. You know, he was deceiving the people. They thought it was the power of God. It was, this is, so now we're getting into new, the New Testament because, you know, there's a line of, well, at the cross, Jesus did away with all the power of Satan. And now he can only deceive. Well, okay, well, let's look at the New Testament to see if that's true. We'll, look, we'll, we'll measure that theology, that doctrine up with the New Testament scriptures to determine the validity of it. Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 11. Now there was a man named Simon who previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria, claiming to be someone great. And they all paid attention to him from the least to the greatest saying, this man is called the great power of God. So the people are thinking he has the power of God. They're deceived. Understand this is how sorcery works. This is how witchcraft works. It twists, it perverts, it deludes, it deceives. The people said he has the power of God operating in him. <clears throat> And they were paying attention to him uh, because for a long time he had mystified and dazzled them with his magic. So I want it, I just want to read this. So the, the, the Greek word for magic means sorcery. So when we're talking about magic here, we're talking about sorcery. We're talking about witchcraft. We're talking about this satanic power operating through him, the occult operating through him. And people are saying it's the great power of God operating through him. Because they cannot properly discern because they're not walking with God as his disciples in fullness. If you're not walking with the Lord in, in, as his disciples in these end times, 
meaning you no longer living, but Christ living through you because you're living the crucified life, being crucified to the desires of your own life, your own will, the lusts of the flesh, the desires of the self-life. Only those are the ones who aren't catering to their own self-desire, their own soulish nature. Only those disciples of Jesus are the ones who will not be deceived in the end times. The casual Christian, the casual Americanized Christian who is living a soulish life will be open to all forms of demonic deception and power. They will look at it just like these people did and say, it's the power of God because of the miracle working power and operation. Not knowing the source, not discerning the source because the source is either satanic or it's from Jesus Christ. We must be able to discern the source of the power. And really, if you want to look at it this way, is that if you spend time with the Lord, if you know Him, even being with Him, journeying with Him, walking with Him, and you know Him and you know His presence, you know what He is and you know what He isn't, and you can discern the truth, you'll know Him. You know, I spend time in His presence. I know what His presence feels like. I know what He puts His presence on. So when I see the counterfeit, I'm able to recognize and discern it. Something's off. Something's not right. And then I just take my time and I wait. And I say, okay, something doesn't feel right, so I'm going to wait and I'm going to discern. But really this comes into play because sometimes it's hard to discern what we see online and what we see on the video and on social media. It's very difficult to discern sometimes because you're not there. But when you're there and you're present and you're in the meeting and you can say, okay, listen, is the presence of God, is it here? Is he here? Is he moving? Because I know what he's, his presence is like because I sit with him. I'm with him in a secret place. I know who he is. I, I've been with Jesus. I know who Jesus is because I have a living relationship with him. So then when I'm in the presence of the counterfeit, when I'm in the presence of the satanic, I can discern the difference between the two. I know, you know because you've been with him. But those that don't spend time with him, those that, that are just simply, you know, you've been saved, right? You've been, but you don't have, you're not walking with the Lord. You're still living a life unto the self and to the flesh and catering. You're still more living a life in this world. You're not going to be, you're not going to be able to discern so easily because it's going to look the same. The satanic power is going to look the same as the power of God that's being released. So you only discern the source because you with the source, right? You with Jesus, so you know the author, the source, you know who he is. Therefore, you can discern the counterfeit. You can discern the satanic being released. <clears throat> so I'm saying all that to say this. The Lord's not having me say this to focus on the evil because he's, he's having me say this to say focus on him, walk with him, be with him. Let Jesus be the focus. Let Jesus be our source. So Jesus says in Matthew 24, verses 23 through 24, then if anyone says to you during the great tribulation, I'm reading from the Amplified here, which puts this verse beautifully. If anyone says to you during the great tribulation, look, here is the Christ or there he is, do not believe it, for false Christ and false prophets will appear, and they will provide great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even the elect, God's chosen ones. So we see that Satan is going to be released in this delusion that even the elect can be deceived, and Jesus is, wow, look at that, Jesus is warning us. He's warning us of the power of Satan being released. All I'm doing is what my master did and what my master is doing even now, warning people of the delusion that's being released through the false, through these false prophetic, through the false prophets, through the false apostles, through the false ministers. And, and they're masquerading as they're preaching Christ. See what I'm saying? They're not, they're not saying uh, that Jesus isn't real. They're, I mean, th then everyone would ignore them. No, they're, de they're deluding people by preaching a form of the gospel. They're, even, uh, they're preaching straight from the Bible. They're teaching the Bible. They're, they're quoting the Bible. They're, but they're operating in a satanic power. They're operating in deluding spirits. Just like we see 
that, that there was great power released through Simon, even at the end of the age, which we're talking about, right before Christ's return, at the end of the age, towards the end of the age, and as we move into the time of the great tribulation, we're going to see the fullness of this satanic power release that Jesus prophesied to where he's even saying there's great signs and wonders. There's great power being released. And it's possible, he's saying, listen, it's possible even to deceive the elect. So how about those that aren't even walking with the Lord, that are just going to church, you know, that are just showing up every Sunday that say that, you know, they pray to prayer, but they're not fully committed to Jesus as disciples. What about them? What's gonna happen to them when they start to see these ministers being released? Well, they're already being released. That's why the Lord's pressing me in this. It's the beginning of it. It's already been going on in Africa. It's already been going on in some of these other countries where witchcraft is prevalent and power is being released and people are being deceived. Well, that's coming to America and it's already here. And so the Lord is pressing, his burden is pressing of the urgency of the hour that we need to be aware of what is happening, what is coming, what is occurring even now. The Lord is sharpening our discernment the final, uh, you know, I'll just say this. Let, let, me just, let me just go back to this because, you know, believers, really what is happening here when Jesus is saying that, that this is going to occur is the believers that are really seeking after signs and wonders in the charismatic church who value the power of God more than God himself, who have an idol. Of power. Now listen, I'm not, I, I am all for Jesus moving in miracles and power and we need it and he's going to do it in this hour. He's going to move in miracles and power through his disciples. But I'm saying to you, those who have an idol in their heart for miracles and power, those are the ones in the charismatic church who are at great danger of being deceived. Just like Balaam, they'll hear according to the idol of their heart and they'll be drawn to the, to the miracle working power of through Satan, through Satan's ministers. So if you have an idol of, like the my, many in the charismatic church do, of, of, of miracle working power and signs and wonders, then now is the time to repent of that and, and, and make Jesus your first love. And then yes, when Jesus is your first love and that's secure and you're walking in that and the journeying with God is primary, is the primary focus of your life, then, yes, then it's fine to, to believe and contend for the miracle working power of God that we all want to see and that God is going to release through his messengers, through his disciples in this last hour. <clears throat> but as we can see in Revelation chapter 13, for the final three and a half years, if you want to look at it, it's verses five through eight, but for the final three and a half years, Satan is, is giving great power and authority to the beast, to the Antichrist and the Antichrist system. And, you know, he is going to be permitted to wage war against the saints. And he's going to be given power and authority over every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. So as we can see, Satan certainly does have power. He has great power and he has great authority and the false prophet's gonna call down signs and wonders and fire down from heaven. So there's gonna be great power released in these end times and unlimited seduction to evil. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses nine through 12 is very crucial. It, it, it reveals this unlimited seduction to evil that is occurring. The coming of of the lawless one, the Antichrist, is through the activity and working of Satan. It will be attended by great power with all sorts of miracles, signs, and, and delusive marvels, and lying wonders, and by unlimited seduction to evil, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they did not welcome the truth, but refused to love it, that they might be saved. Therefore, God sins upon them a misleading influence a working of error and strong delusion to make them believe what is false in order that all may be judged and condemned who did not believe in the truth but took pleasure in unrighteousness. So look at this. 
those in the church, the weeds mixed in with the tares in the church that confess Christ, but by their deeds denied him because they lived according to the world. They lived according to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They lived for themselves. They did not commit themselves to Jesus as his true disciples, but they lived serving their own worldly desires. They never fully repented of their sins. Many tr were stayed trapped in a lifestyle of sin. So they did not love the truth, Jesus himself, the truth, who is righteousness, they did not love him and allow him to live through them as vessels of righteousness. They did not allow Jesus to mature in them, come to the measure of the stature, so that he could live through them in purity, in holiness, in righteousness, where there was no sin in them, where there was no cycle, unrepentant sin in them anymore. See, that's what this is talking about here. They chose by their own will to stay bound in sin, they rejected the truth by their very deeds because they chose to stay in wickedness and unrighteousness, not having a love of the truth, but denying the truth by their lifestyle, by their actions. This life of walking with Jesus is all action. It's not by what we say with our mouth. It's what we actually do because we believe in our heart. Our belief in our heart will be tested by our actions, what we actually, how we live. A lot of people confess with their mouth, but their lifestyle is something completely different from their confession. That's what's going to be tested here. Do we really love the truth? Well, that's according to how we walk and live, our purity of life. So if we have really received the truth, which is Jesus, and love the truth, which is Jesus, and we've walked according to him, meaning the truth himself living through us because the truth Jesus has possessed us and we've become vessels of the truth and vessels of his life. That's what the Lord's looking at. Have we become his vessels of righteousness? But see, those who do not become vessels of truth and righteousness. Those are the ones who will be open to this seduction by the evil one. By this, These are the ones who will be open, those who are still living for themselves. They will be open to the influence and delusion of the satanic power that is being released in our day, in this nation right now. Those are the ones who will be open to the satanic power and be deluded by it. So be warned. Be warned of the plans and purposes of Satan. And I'm getting ready to do another video. Um, I might do it right now about... <clears throat> it's going to continue on the same path of the false apostles being released and the true apostles being released. So I'm going to do that right now. I bless you guys. I pray for an increase of discernment in us all. We all need it. I need it. We all need it. We need to stay close to the Lord. Walk with the Lord. Go deeper into him than ever before. Allow him to take more ground in us than ever before. Because this hour is, is very, very heavy right now. As we approach the end of the age, we, it, is, it is a very, very weighty hour that the burden of the Lord is on, that we need to walk in truth and holiness and purity and be close to him so that we do not fall under this satanic power of deception. So bless you guys. I'm going to do another video right now. Thank you. In Jesus' name, be blessed.